Hello everyone, um, thank you to Melanie for inviting us here today. Usually I'm sitting out there in the audience and I'm quite comfortable and happy to do that. So I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm still on a learning curve as you will see as we go through this presentation. Um, when I first got a call from uh, Claire and she was talking about the day 12 uh, give a presentation at this conference, I thought, well, what do they want us to talk about? And it was all about that journey to independence. Um, our first slide here um, actually says spinning out of the NHS. And back in 2012, I thought, well, what's spinning out? Why would they call it a spin out? Well, I found out. <laughs> I really did find out. Um, but firstly, what is age well? Um, a lot of people, even in Sandwell, you say, well, what's age well? What's age well? Is it age UK? No, it's not age UK. We're age well, a completely different organisation. Um, and I think it's really important to mention that it's all about positive ageing. And Walter, Walter there is a cyclist. He's 80 this year and he still races competitively for Hales Only Cycling Club. So, you know, old age should not be a barrier, should it? And we're all going to get there. If you're 50, you're already there. As I said. We're a membership organisation and we could absolutely not exist without our members. We're a membership now of around 1,600 people. There are some professional members in there as well. Um, partner organisations, but the vast majority are local older people. And our chair here, Edna Barker, I wish I could clone her, she's here with me today. But she might stand up and say a few more words a little bit later on. Um, what we try and do, and what we do very successfully, is to reconnect other people with their communities. So we're looking at that social isolation that's regularly in the media. Um, and that's some of the stuff that we try to address. Uh, we try to help people regain their confidence after falls, and we've had some real success in this area with a pilot that we've, we've carried out over the last 12 months. And we look at positive and proactive ageing. So you can actually, we're all living longer, we've all got to think about the retiring. It's great if you've got a pension, but you, if you haven't, then you need to start thinking about it. But it's great if you have a pension, you need to be healthy at the other end to actually be there to, prep, to, to, to make the best use of it. So it's looking at all of that independence. We are only five staff, but again, our members are also our volunteer base, and we absolutely couldn't do without them. Um, there's a lot of peer mentoring that goes on from them, and we've actually commissioned Harris Accountants to uh, look at our social value and measure that, and I'm looking forward to that coming back from Heidi. Do we stop there? No, we do an awful lot of consultation and engagement. We have a direct, what we've always called the direct voice of older people, and this really is where AgeWell started its journey some 17 years ago. And in the last 12 months, we've done a consultations around community nursing, urgent care, and that was with an organisation called Empower. Um, that involved a telephone survey with a lot of our members, 200 people responded in around a week, I think it was, calling at the back, nodding her head. Um, a and &E, the members went to a and &E, they carried out questionnaires, and people, I think that was around 400 questionnaires were completed in a week. And all of that has been put together for um, some of the West Birmingham CCG to actually have a look at how people are accessing A&E and urgent &E and care and why. Uh, the other thing is around long-term conditions. We've recently <coughs> completed, in fact yesterday I sent the report out on the day service reviews around all around um, end-of-life care and the day services that the CCG currently commission. <coughs> And uh, I noticed John Taylor was sitting here today, so we've been over there to see them as well. I had a nice chat to them. Flu Central was something that we did for ourselves, really. And this is, you can see Clive, Clive's here as well. So they, they, I've brought my backup team. Um, and we created Flu Central back at the office, and this was to actually contact all of our members have you had your flu jab? Um, if they hadn't, why not? Could we help you to go along to the GP? Do you need a district nurse to come out? those kind of um, <coughs> encouraging um, ideas in order to get them to take up that flu jab that is so important. 
We, did, we also took the time to look at um, pneumonia, ask them about that, and some of the screening, the public health messages that are out there around bowel cancer, spinal cancer, and, and so we were asking a range of questions also around have you looked at warm zones for your, your heating for the winter, so it was a whole thing that we could actually tap, tap onto the flu, the flu campaign. Facts and figures, um, I mean, what we all know we have an ageing population. I'm not sure you actually do this to death, don't you, in your day-to-day -day, uh, work. And, um, you know, we, we joined the campaign to, join, uh, to end loneliness, and some of the facts and figures that they've got on their website are really useful when we're putting together presentations like this. But it is really quite shocking. Some of the, the, the one that really sort of hits home for me is that half of older people consider TV to be their main form of contact. I mean, you know, what is that all about? We have ha we, I mentioned earlier on about our home-based exercise programme, and we've actually piloted that this year because we've always done a lot of around community-based exercise and force prevention in the community. But what I did feel was that there was a gap. If people are coming out of hospital, they're coming out of seeing the physio and they're going home, Actually, two, two or three weeks with the physio visiting them in their own home is not enough. You, you take a lot longer to heal when you grow older. So we've actually introduced a 12-week um, force prevention programme, and they can have up to 12 weeks, and we do work with My Time Active, and I think Cathy's here as well today, so we, there she is. So if at the end of the 12 weeks you're still not confident about leaving the house, actually you can do their walk from home service, or you can access one of our community-based um, exercise programmes. And we've, we're currently going through our annual report and building up all this nice picture of what we've been doing for the last 12 months. And I asked Pauline the other day, I said, how many people have completed the 12 weeks? She said, 18 people. I went, right, okay, well, can we, well, when you do the, the weekly phone call, can you ask those 18 people, how are they feeling today? Are they more confident? Have you fallen? Have you been back into hospital? And I expected there to be, you know, I don't know, about nine of them that they would say, no, we're okay. And then the others say, well, actually, I've had another fall. And I was absolutely amazed to find that of the 18, not one person has fallen since, and not one of them has gone back into hospital. So we'll be doing some more of that. <coughs> I have a question, and I'll give you the answer later. And Mary and Melanie cannot answer this. You may not actually remember the answer to this. Um, in 1952, the Queen ascended to the throne and she sent out 255 birthday telegrams to all, the, all those people that were celebrating their birthday, their 100th birthday that year. How many did she send out in 2010? It's probably increased, and I'm not going to give you the answer just yet. What kind of retirement are you planning? I've based this on Edna Ache, because she's a real role model. So we've got an Edna one. <laughs> and this is the only one that we did to the dragons then actually. They weren't that bad. They weren't that bad. They're not that bad dragons. Um, but you know that picture there for me, we do see people like that. And they are the ones that are regularly going to the GP. If they can't go to the GP, they're picking up the phone, they're calling out the ambulance, they're going into an A&E, and you get into that vicious cycle. And those are estimated estimated costs that we worked out as part of our work that we went through with the, the Young Foundation. Oh, wouldn't you like to be Edna too? Now, I get this from Edna, and she might be telling you today. Those, she doesn't go to the GP on a regular basis, and she certainly doesn't call out the ambulance. I think we did that about six years ago, when she had four. Um, outpatients appointments, yes, she still has to do that but it's not on such a regular basis. And it's far less cost to the NHS. And she certainly, she's living in her own home, she's independent, she's busier now than she has ever been when she's working with Andrew. Um, I think she's tried to retire about four times and we just keep dragging around her retirement. And there she is with her iPad actually. So she goes there, she's got her iPad and an iPhone, so. Yeah. Our journey to independence, which is really what uh, Melanie asked us to come along here today. Uh, AFOR started around 17 years ago and it was um, 
a small group of local residents that said we want to actually have a say in what is being the services that are being designed and delivered for us. And subsequently, it, it came about through funny monies that, we, that used to be around, but it, it, it ended up being wholly funded by Sandwell PCT. And it became a respected voice in the borough of older people and to help people and the commissioners to work together and actually look at the, the services that they were designing for older people. In January 2012, um, we were looking at, uh, at the, the spin out scenario, and I've not, I've not actually heard of the right to provide because I haven't had to think about anything like that. But in about, the, in about 2012, we thought, yeah, we'll consider this because we couldn't see ourselves in the new structure. We couldn't see us in ourselves in a CSU, we couldn't see ourselves as part of the CCG. So we put together an expression of interest in just seven days with a Wendy Garkas from For Health, and we successfully obtained social enterprise investment funding to help us to get the expertise in to develop a business case. And that was with the two companies, one Mutual Ventures and one Social Ventures, but we were also a successful spin-out. And they helped us to develop, uh, develop the business plan, look at governance structures, because we've never had to do any of that before and also mentored the staff and members through the whole process because by then I was really spinning. <laughs> the challenges we faced, uh, at the time the NHS was being completely restructured um, and it was ever changing faces and shifting sounds so I'd go along to meetings and board meetings presenting the plan and I'd be thinking where, where were the people that I was talking to last week um, you've got the, CC, the PCT being abolished, the SHA was doing the same, the CCG was newly emerging, so you've got all of those shifting sands and different people. However, there was one constant, and he is our champion. And he's sitting at the back still. Why aren't you sitting down here? <laughs> Andy, Andy Williams was definitely the champion for Angel when we were going through all of this. And he was, def he was definitely the one constant and the face that didn't change on a regular basis. And I thank you so much for that, Andy. Um, so in 2013, the request to become a spin out was approved, and I thought, well, great, we've done it. <clears throat> but that is just the beginning of the journey, really, isn't it? But I'd like to show you Age Well in Action. These are some of our members. They are going to lay playing ping pong. And that's the one on the right there is a, a discussion group within power. The gentleman there talking to the lady is actually one of our befrienders, and that's one of our exercise groups. The lady there on the right, um, Winnie. The story about Winnie was one Friday afternoon, I was about to go up and leave the office, and the phone rang, and I thought, well, I've got to pick this up, and it was Winnie. And she was saying, I want to go to an exercise class, I'm on my own. And I said, well, we had a bit of a chat, and I said, well, I don't, I'm not sure an exercise class is quite for you yet, but I'll tell you what, on Monday morning, we'll come, and, we'll come out and see you. And when I actually saw this photograph, I didn't recognise her, because she, it was a completely different lady to the lady I'd met <coughs> on Monday morning, when Edna and I went to visit her. And she, she'd been married for 70 years, and she'd lost her husband about 10 months previously, no close relatives or friends, and she was completely bereft. She didn't know what to do. She was staying in the house all of the time. She went through the befriending service. She has regular phone calls. She joins our Wednesday forum. She's there at the talking threads. She's been on to the radio WM talking about ending loneliness and why you need to stay connected and how important it is. And the photograph is completely different to the lady I met that Monday morning. Amazing lady. She, she Skypes. She's got an iMac. Brilliant. Loads of it. <coughs> Lessons learnt in the future. You know, one year on, we develop, we, we're, we're still developing, we're still growing, we're still learning. Um, becoming a community interest company was just the beginning. It's been a steep learning curve. You know, when we were in the NHS, there was this cloud of peer somewhere that did all the payroll and the HR, and I didn't have to worry about the tax man or anything like that. Um, 
and that was a real and that was a real steep learning curve for us. In fact, it's still quite strange paying myself every month. Um, it's a different mindset set for the staff. So we, you know, you all suddenly become south and you've got to become business people and you know, I had to become a chief executive and I never expected to be doing any of that. The staff, five of us, three of three of us are directors, we didn't think we would be doing that. Um, we have to look at further funding opportunities. We do like to work very much in partnerships, so there's Jeff here and the it's the Young Foundation and we're working with the Housing Association down in Kidderminster. We're working with Sandwell Ledger Trust and that's uh, something else that we're doing down in the New Ryland Centre down in Bronzeville. <coughs> so we're going beyond the borders of Sandwell. Now our contract is with Sandwell and West Birmingham CCG so we're looking further into the West Birmingham area as well. So we work with BBSC on their Ageing Better programme and so you start networking and reaching out to other organisations. And obviously our, our, our membership with um, Zoom was really, really beneficial. We first started off with obviously the basic membership to put up your banner and by the end of the event we were signing up to the, the full membership and <laughs> standing up here and speaking to you today. Um, the value of networking cannot be underestimated. You know, you really do need to go out there and work with others. And the incubator programme came about because I asked Claire and um, Melanie one day, I, I need to help get someone to help me build a business case about an idea that we've got. And development keys came out of the pot. And as a result of that, we're on their incubator programme, and I feel like a bit like an egg. But uh, it's been, we've only had two sessions so far, and Dave will probably be in the room somewhere here. Um, we've had two sessions so far, but that is helping us to look at building a sustainable business. And so it's still a learning curve, and we've still got a lot to learn, but hopefully we will have a successful future. Thank you. And thank you also to some of the people that we've worked with in the last 12 months. The CCG with whom we had the contract. Uh, the Young Foundation, we were one of the 15, but we weren't one of the final six. However, we still make contact with, uh, uh, with uh, the Young Foundation and the, uh, the Housing Association down in Kidderminster. And we've always actually said, if we could just bottle out to well, we'd actually be made. And we might just have sold our first bottle to them. That's it. What the answer to the question? Anybody? What do you think? What do you think? Any guesses? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve thousand six hundred forty. Fifty percent of the weeks. So, thank you. I don't know if you've got any questions or whether you've got time for it.